y'all are not here for a 90s sing-along. So let's get into this video. Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan. I love colorful makeup and colorful language. And welcome to my channel, or if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here. And welcome to another episode of the new makeup hangover. So if you are new here, I am so glad you are here. I think I already said that, but if you're new here, the new makeup hangover is a creation that two of my dear friends and I, you know, we, we, <laughs> If you are new here, the new makeup hangover is a concept that has been created by me and my two friends, Teresa is dead and Audra at home. We came together and came up with this concept to give you some freshly baked or leftover makeup release conversations between the new makeup nonsense bingo episodes. So. This week, this week I have a lucky seven things that I want to talk about. And wait, I just for, I mean, I didn't, did I forget? I forgot. <laughs> My beverage for today. First of all, first of all, glittery cat cup for the win. You will be seeing this hopefully a lot in videos. I have a Diet Coke because I am a trash human, but it's some, um, or the Coca-Cola without sugar. It's something, it tastes like Diet Coke, but it doesn't. But again, I'm a trash human, so my sense of taste is sometimes off, but I'm still gonna be enjoying some carbonated beverages. And we have a very 90s vibe happening with the makeup and the clothes. Some slime, Nickelodeon, inspired feelings happening on the face. Uh, we have a shadow from Kaleidos VR Neon. We have a lot of Terramin's Light Year as the highlight, Terramin's Saturn's Rings as like the highlight inner corner on the eyes, Light Year and City Grace Tempest mixed together here. The liners are the Mirror Beauty uh, Neon Knights palette, very well loved, uh, with a touch of one of the Neon Greens from Terramin's and the Neon Green Maps. Lips are made it from Papa Beauty. Papa, 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 from Papa. <laughs> Lips are made it from Papa Beauty with this essence, shine, 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 apricot or peach name gloss. And cheeks are a mix of uh, the two likely makeup blush palettes, Fairy and Clown, the two oranges in there, with an orange blush. We so well. So that's a makeup breakdown. It's a lot of stuff, so I just I want to say it because of, in case you questions. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot over because we have a nice little art wall that will be where products are put. I also haven't filmed. Um, since bingo. So I'm feeling very, very, uh, I don't even have the words. I'm feeling rusty. <laughs> so bear with me. Also, before we get into the products, if you like colorful makeup, if you like bitches with lots of opinions, or you just like cute fat babes in general, I hope you will subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, I would love to have you over on my Patreon or my YouTube membership if you feel so inspired to support me in other ways. So as I have seen, as I kind of did with the first new makeup hangover, um, I kind of grouped things together because that's how my brain works. Patterns trends, all of that. And that's one of the things I actually like about, not actually, like it's one of the things I really like about this video, uh, not only because we get to pick what we want to talk about, how much we want to talk about, all of that, but I like seeing trends and patterns and blah, 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 neurodivergent brain. Uh, so it's nice to like purposefully you know, kind of work that way. Um, so I feel a little bit like Audra in Beauty News because the first couple of things we're talking about are just, they're, they're beauty news in a lot of ways. Um, the biggest one that is, to me, no shocker, is uh, Bite Beauty is closing. Now, I had the audacity to think I could film without my glasses, but I, I know that's not actually true. So <laughs> let's be able to read things. 
So Bite Beauty is closing. I heard kind of through the grapevine that um, Shocker Trend Mood maybe revealed this a little before was supposed to be revealed because the post is, so it's time to say goodbye to the iconic products to buy beauty. The brand is closing. Everything is 50% off. The lip labs are staying open and expanding. Um, first of all, I, 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 I hate, I hate, I hate the wording. I, I have a lot of problems with trend mood if you haven't been here before. So, uh, just giving you that heads up, but like, I hate that wording of like stock up before they close friends, strangers, internet, they are closing for a reason. Okay. And where bite dies, house labs rises. I will get into that in a moment, but like when I saw the announcement of House Labs going into Sephora and the information was like, oh, this is now Kendo owned. I was like, okay, Bite doesn't have long then because like, I mean, I, but I didn't feel like Bite had long for quite a while. Here's the thing. If you don't know, Bite rebranded re and um, discontinued their entire line because they were rebranding to an all vegan line. Now, Bite was already a very like natural line. The name comes from being able to like eat, bite your makeup. Like it was already very natural to me. Um, and they had like such creamy, delicious formulas. And, and the thing that I think is hilarious in my dark brain is that like they had these super creamy very comfortable very emollient lipsticks during the height of the good lipsticks everywhere during the height of deserts on our mouths and right i feel like right in that moment when they were rebranding was when I felt like that grip that liquid lipsticks had on so many people was loosening up. So like that was the perfect moment to go back to these, these formulas. I had a lot of uh, bite lipsticks, a lot of their lip products in variety of formulas. And so when they rebranded and it took so long for the relaunch and then they came back without many lip products, and then when they ended up coming back with lip products, they were like, not the creamy dreamy formulas that, that I knew of. I, I was like, I don't know, no, no. I also, because I am a grudge holder, felt, or not even grudge holder, I don't know. I felt some kind of way about this launch of their foundation where they were like, I felt like there was multiple bigger name creator, some of whom at the time I was still following, that were like, oh my god, you guys, I can't talk about it yet, but I have the best foundation. You, oh, I cannot wait to tell you about it. And like, it, it was the Bite Foundation that they talked about at the initial launch and then never to rarely again. So yeah, I just, the whole thing is not surprising. I'm not sad about it. I've moved on from Bite. I've kind of like processed any emotional hold I have on it. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to be like, please don't stock up now because my feelings on like holy grails and when brands go away is, I mean, I, I definitely get it, but I also feel like the industry is always evolving. Brands are always evolving. And this foundation or mascara or lipstick or lip balm that you feel like is your absolute favorite and cannot be replaced might be replaced tomorrow, depending on who's releasing what. So I just feel like rather than buying backups of old products, because I'm, I'm going to say they're old products. Um, why don't you just enjoy what you have, use it up however, in whatever pace you can use it up, 
and then move on. But that's just because I feel like most backups are destined to go bad before you're actually going to use them. So anyway, those are my feelings about Byte. I just, I'm, I get it. I get that people are sad to see it, see it go. I'm sure there are people who have bought from the rebrand, the relaunch, who really like those products, but I don't know anyone that does. Besides the mascara, I heard a couple people talking about how they really love the, the mascara, but like, first of all, upstairs neighbors, can you give me a break once in my goddamn life? And, and let's talk about House Labs. So I, in my new makeup nonsense bingo, was like, this is gonna be skincare. I, I like mark my words. It's not skincare. Basically they have, it seems like basically House Labs was sold to Kendo um, and moved away from whoever was creating their stuff when it was being uh, distributed by Amazon. And it's supercharged, clean artistry makeup, launching June 9th houselabs.com globally and Sephora US and Canada online and in select stores. So of course I saw the like photo with the little bit of acid green like liner shadow moment and I was like maybe but I just I maybe this is a bold statement but I don't think it is. I don't think Kendo really knows what they're doing anymore. I think they had their moment with Marc Jacobs, with Bite, with KVD, with Fenty, with whoever else that I'm forgetting. But then they lost it. And like, so when a brand is getting picked up by Kendo, I don't have restored faith. So yeah, and like clean beauty is Sephora's whole shtick, so that's why that's mar that marketing is there. Um, I, I don't believe otherwise, like I don't believe that Gaga all of a sudden is super into clean beauty. Um, I think it's fine for a celebrity to launch a line and not be that connected to it. That's whatever in my book, but like none of these changes, none of this evolution makes me feel excited and I hope that people that were really in it because it's Gaga have been able to maybe see that, that that's not like you can like House Labs makeup and you can like Lady Gaga but you don't need to buy House Labs makeup just because you like Lady Gaga. Uh, the last thing in kind of like beauty news of it all is that uh, Jared Blandino and Jeremy Johnson are leaving Too Faced. So Too Faced has been owned by Estee Lauder for a few years and uh, they have been the like they created the brand and they've been with the brand for 24 years. I mean, it's not surprising to see brand owners leave brands. Um, Wendy of Urban Decay has, Bobby Brown, I feel like the creators of, like if you start digging into a lot of it, I feel like this is not a new thing. And I do, I do believe that they are gonna go do their own thing. <laughs> I am very, uh, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my like oracle moment that I might be right about and I might be wrong about, but we have seen the despair that is Callie Ray, which is Wendy of Urban Decay. Uh, this is this is her new brand. And if you haven't seen the despair of Callie Ray, um, I'm either gonna insert the link, the clip, the whoa. I'm either going to insert a moment from a previous new makeup nonsense bingo or I will just link it in the cards. It's probably just gonna be linked in the cards. But basically, the branding and everything is, whew, like, no. I, that's what I expect for Jared and, and Jer Jeremy. I, I expect 
um, a Too Faced-esque baby to hit the market sometime in the future. I just, that's, that's what I feel. Um, I don't know. It just, it seems like the thing that brand owners do. I, I don't blame a brand owner if they just want to like retire or like get out of the industry and just, just live off of what they built. But I don't know. There's just something about <laughs> probably the toxicity of Too Faced that I'm like, I don't think we've gotten rid of you. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I don't think we are free of those uh, brand owners. And you know, we're not free of the brand either. They're they're staying around, as for all we know. Um, but yeah. So actually, I uh, let's talk. Also, kind of beauty news, but a new brand. Uh, did I talk about, I feel like I talked about Half Magic. So Half Magic Beauty is a new brand that is, yeah, I did talk about it. It's created by the makeup artist behind Euphoria. And it's releasing, they're releasing their first collection. I, oh, the 17th. So either the day you're watching this or the day after. Um, and they have released like the details because I know, yeah, when I looked at, when I talked about it in New Makeup Mountain Bingo, I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I can't quite tell. And so I can't get super excited yet. So they are doing matte eye paint liners. Uh, they are doing shimmer eye paints and liners. Uh, oh, so they're like eye paint and liner. Okay. So matte, shimmer, glitter, uh, lip kits that have a like mouth cloud lipstick and liner, um, duochrome glow powders, a Dulock hydrating set, wing magician reusable silicone guide, eyeliner brush, face gems, and tweezers to apply your adornments. I, I, look, I don't, okay, I don't, I don't like eye paints. I mean, I'm gonna be real honest, the PR push that About Face has been doing for their matte eye paint has made me interested in that formula. I'm gonna admit that. I would consider picking up one or two kind of as like bases, like the, the green or the yellowy green or maybe the white or maybe the black, like as bases or mixers. But that's seriously, seriously, that's, that's a PR creators that I follow using their products. Like I know that, and I know that that's the risk that I would be taking. Uh, somebody that I follow has mentioned that they did, did get PR from, from the brand, which I'm excited by. I think it's really fucking cool. Um, so I will be looking for posts and opinions, but right now I'm like, like there's some parts to like the packaging or the brand photos that like, I'm like, oh yes. And then there are others that I'm just like, mm. but I think in general, like I, 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 yeah, I'm not, I'm not into the, the like liquid shadows and I need to be really realistic with that. Um, especially like shiny or glittery. I will just use my, singles and my palettes and stuff so uh price point the all of the the matte and shimmer eye paints are 24 dollars. the glitter ones are 20 the lip kits which have two products in them are 26 the glow powders are 20 the the spray is 20 um like the tools are 10 to 14 dollars I mean, the the price point is, it's, so the price point is at a place where I'm like, this better be some good shit. And not just like teenager makeup. And I hope y'all get what I'm saying. Um, so I don't know, I'm, and like, there's a part of me that I guess, I guess this is the duochrome glow powders. Like there's a part of me with that packaging that I'm like, oh yes. And then there's a part of me that's like, mm, I, I, 
I, I feel very, mm, I don't know. So don't expect me to be one of the first to review this brand, but I'm looking kind of, eh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can't even like commit to that fully. Let me do a quick little lip check and see where we're at. Okay. okay, we're just gonna do lipstick and not more gloss. I feel like this is somewhere between like cotton candy and, and grape with like sugar free cocoa. It, it is weird. It's, it's weird. It's... Mm. Yeah. Am I still drinking it? Yes. I know we're Look, I do have some things that I'm excited to talk to you about, but I cannot do this video without talking about, speaking of our um, boring, fake, edgy friends, Urban Decay. So Urban Decay has three new palettes, new additions to the Naked family. There are many palettes, so each palette has six shades, and they are inspired by fan favorite Naked shades. So they're available May 20th. Uh, there is one in Sin, which has this like, they all have like a camo exterior, which look very cool, giving that neon, bit of like 90s, 2000s vibes. Sin, I can kind of understand that, that um, shadow choice. There's one half baked and, and that I can also, I guess, kind of understand that shadow choice. The what? <laughs> Foxy. So Foxy, this like shade that inspired a whole palette, it's the beige shade? It's the, the white beige shade? Why is that? I, I mean, uh, realistically, these are all terrible. They're all terrible. In my opinion, they all look terrible. In the marketing photos, they all look very, very pale, very, very pale. Um, it looks like they've added like just just the tiniest. They have they have a big vat of color, and they went and got a paintbrush and just like dipped in a little color and just into the vat. And they're like, "Look, color!" And you're like, "Okay." I mean, you're trying to tell me color by the packaging, but the inside, ugh. and you know, I'm going to say Urban Decay is usually pretty bad with their marketing photos because I feel like we've had this conversation multiple times where like a marketing photo will look very, very neutral and very pale. And then more imagery comes out and it looks scotch better. But, like, I am team mini palettes. I am team mini palettes. But, no. And, like, okay. So, they, they had previously released some mini naked palettes. And I don't know if they're still on the market or if these are kind of replacing them. I'm not really sure. But... They were in like, I think, I think 2016, I feel like it was like a good five plus years ago when they released at least like when they, when they did that. And at that time, when I saw those palettes release, I was like, I'm uncooked chicken. And even I look at that palette and say, why like at that time and I, and I didn't have the vocabulary for it as much I didn't have the the knowledge as much but even then I was like the these seem no and I think the fact that six years later they're still releasing stuff that makes me go what skin tone is that for? Like, I get that brands have to like, eh, I don't even get it. I was gonna say I get that brands have to learn and grow and take feedback and get better. 
okay, it's been six years. Why is this? Why is that what we got in 2022? So I wasn't sure how many products I was going to talk about today. Um, but I think I just want to do two more products and we are ending on high notes. So this one in particular, quite a few people mentioned that they would love to hear my thoughts on. And this is the Sugar Drizzle Man I Love Frogs collection, MILF. So there's a palette, there are whipped cream eyeshadow flakes, liquid eyeshadows, and a brush set. It was released um, Saturday. I'm filming on Sunday, so I was gonna say yesterday. This is a 12 pan palette and it's, so I have yet to try Sugar Drizzle. A dear kind subscriber did gift me the pickle palette, but I had it shipped to my USPO box. Who knows when I'm actually gonna get my hands on it. Um, but like, I, they've been on my radar for a while. This is the palette, the, this. Because green and purple, sign me the fuck up. Um, yeah, it's 12 pans. There's like four greens, there's four like purples, and then there's four that kind of go in that purpley teal row category, whatever. I'm, I'm looking at swatches, so that's and that's how they're categorized. So that's kind of how I'm categorizing them in my brain. Um, <laughs> the funny thing, the funny thing. So my dear friend, Audra, uh, I never mind trying to get collections or makeup for them while they're working because fuck their job and fuck capitalism. And so yesterday while they were working, I got it for them. Like it's not a gift, they, they paid me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was trying to get to originally, so they, they had a very small number of damaged like palettes where the, the shadow has started uh, leaking out some oil. And so they were gonna be a good price point. So my goal was to get two of those because I thought for me, I'll just depot them and use the shadows. Those were gone in like less than a minute. And so by that point I was like, let me just get the palette for Audra and I will later, later. Cause like, that's the thing is I don't, <sighs> I don't like that kind of stress. I don't like those kind of new release stresses. I really don't enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I do things for friends that I wouldn't necessarily fuck with for myself. Uh, so I think it's really pretty. I think it's really pretty. I have it on my wish list. I hope they do a restock and I hope that the restock is less stressful. And then I might consider if they ship to directly to me, either having it shipped to me and spending that money or getting it shipped to my PO box. I think it's a really pretty looking palette. Do I think I probably have all those multi-chromes? Yeah, yeah. But I fucking love an all shimmer palette. I just, an all shimmer duochrome multi-chrome, especially like duochrome multi-chrome because I'm a duochrome multi-chrome whore. I like, I actively actually don't usually find myself using just metallics, just foils. Like I need, I need to shift I'm a weirdo, I know. Uh, so the palette looks stunning. I really, really think it's beautiful. Uh, but it actually was interesting seeing that they had some issues with like the oil leakage for, for shadows, which happens, especially with very like squishy emollient shadows. It just, it was a good reminder where I'm like, I might still prefer my singles, but like, I still want it. Um, the brushes look fine to me. I'm not a liquid shadow person and I think it's really interesting how all, there's a bunch of indie brands currently releasing these whipped cream eyeshadow flakes, which to me look like a take on the Danessa Myrex chrome flakes that are that like gel flaky. And like this has happened with other things in the past multi-chrome liners, uh, the, these like shiny squishy eyeshadows. Like I think there is a point where certain private label factories create a product and all of a sudden a bunch of, you know, small indie brands are picking it up. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. 
I don't have any desire for it because as I discussed, like I don't have a love of liquid shadows. And for me, sometimes the way the chrome flakes, the flaky kind of cream, like I'm talking like the Dedessa chrome flake and then these indie ones, sometimes the way they look on the eyes like skeeves me out. Like, like, oh, it's pretty and shifty, but I can't, I can't, oh. like I love texture, but sometimes there's too much. And I have found, like, I, I think, I feel like, did I try, I tried some pressed flakies and I tried, I think I had some loose flakies for like two seconds before they fluffed away in the air. And on my eyes, with the shape of my eyes and the way it's, kind of squished in like I have the hooded lids and droopy droopy skin I don't think that the chrome flakies are gonna do me any favors so it's one of those situations where it's a new product that I'm theoretically intrigued by but not enough to buy it myself if a friend was like I'm gonna decant you just like the tiniest amount sanitarily and like you know, give you a little jar. Yes, yes, fuck yes. But buying a whole one just for, mm, no, no. They're $16 a piece. I would rather, and this is not just for Sugar Drizzle, for any of these brands releasing it, I would rather just go buy a single eyeshadow or two, depending on what I'm buying, that give me texture and shine and sparkle and shift. So. That is the Sugar Drizzle release. Now, I, 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 I wasn't sure if I was gonna film this on Saturday or Sunday, and I ended up uh, filming it today on Sunday. And last night, or yesterday, when I decided I was going to do that, and this morning, the entire time, I was like, I want that. I need to reveal the collection. Please, please reveal the collection. Please, please reveal the collection. And that's the new Odin's Eye collection. So. Odin's Eye has a new collection coming on um, May 20th, 6 p.m. Swedish time, which is 10 a.m. my time. And so I originally only saw the one photo. So it's the Solmon 2 collection. There is a 15 pan eyeshadow palette for $32 or $33. There, is, there are 15 gel liners that are six dollars each or it looks like 60 for the set there are sunlight love blushers six shades for 21 dollars moonlight feel highlighter six shade for 23 dollars and a makeup mirror for ten dollars and you get a double ended highlighter brush if you order something from the collection within the first 10 days so solmon is like sun and moon and <gasps> release they were the first photo that I saw this morning it shows a handful of things and this bad bitch this blush and highlight packaging oh my god okay so when I was hearing good things about the uh I've heard good things about the Odin's Eye blushes and I've heard good things about their highlighter palettes but the the soft card or the cardboard packaging for the blushes never fully tugged at my heartstrings and then Cleona has the Dragon Fruit collection. And I love the uh, colorful acrylic packaging of the fruit lighters, but I didn't pick up either one just because I didn't feel like they were exactly colors I was gonna reach for. The packaging for these blushes and highlighters, oh my word so they have released more photos since this morning so i'm just seeing them uh the blushes look like it looks like there are some more matte satin ones and shimmery ones or maybe it's yeah no those are the blushes and then so the blushes are in like a like a sunny bronzy packaging and then the highlights look like they're in a purpley packaging I can't fully tell from the swatches what the colors exactly are. But I, I, I want them. I want them. 
Uh, I also am incredibly tempted by the eyeliners and it's absolutely ridiculous because I have just recently kind of come to this understanding that like, I don't need to focus on waterline. Like I love pop of color in the waterline. I love the contrast. I love that like added touch, but my waterline is just very, very finicky. So I would say over the last like six months, I've been like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna like rein in my desire to like try every eyeliner. Like I will look at them longingly, but do I actually wanna try them? I just, uh, I have been wanting like a rainbow set of pencil liners. And these aren't as like super incredibly, actually some of them are more vibrant than others. Teresa, please tell me how these, I know you're gonna have a review, I know you got it in PR. Please tell me how these perform because I might pick up the whole collection of eyeliners and then at least a blush and highlighter. Probably what's gonna end up happening is like two to three blushes and highlighters each. I'm a clown. Um, the palette is really pretty, but even, so even when I saw it in the blurred image, um, I kind of immediately thought of the Drench and Midas Genesis palette. So this, I think, I think Drench still has some of these available on the site, but this was a, a brand collab palette that came out last, was it last year or early? No, I don't know, time is, time is fake. So this has like blues and turquoises that has warm tones and it has some, like it has a little bit of that pinky tone. And to me, I look at the two palettes and I see a lot in common. So I'm going to try to resist the Odin's Eye palette because the reality is that I don't reach for blues that often. I love my greens, I love my purples, I love pinks, I love yellows. What I don't reach for often, blues and oranges. And what that palette has a lot of are blues and oranges or warm neutrals. So I'm gonna try to, to not, to not, and just focus on the face products and the eyeliners, but I am fucking buzzing. I am buzzing. And Odin's eye ship to Mexico. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. I think mean, I said it twice, but like, it's happening. So I am very excited about the collection. I, I'm not 100% sure if like the blush tones are exactly perfectly me. I'm gonna, they send PR, so I'm gonna look for reviews. I know Teresa has it, I know Millie has it. I'm sure there will be other people. So I'm just gonna, I am very excited, but I'm also like trying to rein it in. I'm failing currently at reining it in, but I'm trying, trying, trying. Yeah. So on that note, let me know. Are you as excited about any of these releases as I am? Are you as like disappointed at any of the things as I am? Are you as uh, meh about any of the things as I am? This was fun. I'm, I'm glad I, I, I reined myself in because I gave myself the space to like, gush and enjoy talking about like some of these indie releases um and every time it'll kind of change up depending on what is pressing on my heart the most uh, but yeah if you're new here and you enjoy this i really hope you will subscribe i did not mention this in the beginning of the video but if you haven't seen Teresa or audra's videos they are linked in the description box and if you like want to join in on this go for it i whatever <laughs> you know, you know how it works around here. Even if, if you don't, I have a ton of videos for you to watch and find out. And I, thank you so much to my YouTube patron or my, my patrons and my YouTube members. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for bearing with me while I've been 
less active than I want to be, work and life are kicking my ass, but if you are watching and you are not a patron or a member and you feel inspired to support me, I would love to have you over there. Everything is linked in the description box. And yeah, that is basically it. Just one more thing. Don't forget to take care of yourself better today than you did yesterday because you, you are worth it. Now go eat something and drink some water or coffee or whatever. I'm going to go do that too because I have to listen to myself too. Bye friends. I'm a mess. I cannot go a week between filming regularly. It fucks me up.